Awe, I'm Theo. Theo comes from Alexandra Township in South Africa. Growing up here was tough, but I'm the leader that I am today because I'm from here. Theo grew up and left the township. He started to work abroad. I lived abroad for some time, but at a certain point, I had to decide whether I'm going to be the only one living here comfortably or I'm going to come back home and bring about a solution to my community. He decided to take a risk and move back. I started from the bottom, selling from the, my car trunk. It was really tough at the beginning. But eight years later, Theo's shoe brand, Batu, is a big success and he's able to give back. I left one job that supported me and my family and I started a business that supported 400 more families. Batu shoes are rooted in his home. We are making African fashion global while we're owning where we come from. And I think that's about time. It's our time. It's about time. Let's walk a day in Theo shoes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please bring to the stage the man Theo from Batu. Welcome. Thank you. Theo, you know, um, I don't have my shoes yet. What's up? Just go. Do the back? Yeah. I've In got, gold? I've got a pair for you. Ooh. On that note, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Theo Baloi. I am the first employee of Batu. Our vision is to build a shoe brand that Africans can proudly affiliate with. And right at the core of our mission, we want to reignite hope and create sustainable jobs. Across 52 countries, the unemployment rate in Africa is 9.53%, with the value contribution being South Africa at 29.81%, dominated by youth unemployment in South Africa, which contributes 51.52%. Interesting fact, South Africa ranks number two across the globe in the category of youth unemployment. In 2015, I became a crazy man and brought about a solution that is going to address this state of affairs. I left my job at PwC UAE to come back home and to bring about a solution that is going to address this. The beauty about that solution is that it was not only addressing the issues in my community, but it was actually putting Africa in a global map as far as retail and foodware is concerned. More than anything else, it was a solution that was going to make each and every African to walk their journey with pride. Let me tell you more how I started. I did about 18 months of research and development in and around foodware across the globe. And my findings were, in each and every region across the globe, there's at least one or two African uh, foodware brands. You mentioned Asia, North America, Europe. What do we have in Africa? We have Batu, a proudly South African sneaker business that aims at making sure that each and every African walks their journey with pride. We control and run 95% of our value chain in all the components, and we outsource our, our value chain 5%, which is the means of production. And we do all of this through running and trading 32 brick and mortar stores. We have a growth ambition of 60% for FY23-24, and this is all possible through optimizing our three sales channel, which is retail, online, and corporate sales. And through that model, it actually affords us to achieve our mission of reigniting hope because at each and every component of the ecosystem, we get to create jobs. And today, we have created 400 jobs. But for us, it's beyond creating jobs. It's a part of being service to our future leader and communities. The Batu for Batu Care Project, you know, it's more than just a passion project for us. It's like a legacy project. We are that brand that wants to, walk, you know, to journey with Africans, accommodate them on their journey of becoming great, unleashing their best potential. It's a project that really tries to address the social ills that we've got in our schools, you know, and with a positive message of inspiring our future leaders to walk their journey, to believe in themselves, to follow their dreams. Simply put, we are not just a shoe brand. We are a shoe brand with a soul. Thank you. And now the Q&A. Diane will start, then Joe, and then Madame Awusika. Over to you. Wow. Thank you, Theo. Thank you. I love it. A shoe brand with a soul. Yes. Indeed, a shoe is a commodity, right? Yep. So you're putting a soul into a shoe. 
and to our, and to our, to our consumers as well. That's amazing. Yep. So, I, you know, I really love it uh, to have a brand uh, for, for Africa because Africa is the youngest continent yep. and uh, probably if you are not there, maybe you know, Nike and all these other global brands would look at Africa and are already looking at Africa as the biggest market. Yep. So I, I want uh, to understand because I didn't know Batu until I came here. Yeah. And I'm from Kigali. How do you make this really an African brand? And how do you scale your, your, your e-commerce? Because, and I even want to understand uh, in, in your sales strategy, what percentage is in, the, in retail stores? What is e-commerce? I want to understand that and how you, uh, you strategize about being really, really an African brand. So um, our revenue model within um, the three sales channels being retail, omnichannel online, and um, corporate sales, it's split between 75% uh, being retail, 15% uh, being uh, online. That's a problem. Yes, I know. I know. And 10% um, being corporate sales. To your question, our online strategy is about uh, making sure that we connect with uh, our consumer and making sure that we actually open up that channel to a bigger audience you know, across the globe. And mainly it's supported by the African diaspora that lives in different regions, right? And in, um, in our brand strategy, we make sure that we address four things, which is um, association, awareness, price, and design. And through our story, if you look at the story of Batu, we try to tell it in different types or in different uh, platforms. Um, and it's a story that really resonates with so many uh, Africans because Batu actually means shoe. So wherever we go through um, B2B collaborations and through uh, market activations, we make sure that we are visible. And um, we are very much visible also on our Omni channel as well. So, so explain to us, what's your, your marketing strategy? Because we've seen you know, some of these shoe brands or you know, uh, clothing brands they will partner with athletes or yes. you know, movie celebrities. Yes. So, so what's your strategy and how really, I still don't understand how you intend to become a true African brand so you can go in the streets of Kigali yes. and see some people wearing these shoes. Yes, so the word Batu means shoes in South African slang. And then if you look at or you double tap on the name where it comes from in South Africa specifically, it um, is a word that was used during, um, before democracy. You know, in an emphasis to say that even when we were, you know, oppressed, we would wear our shoes and still go fight for liberation. So it carries a very big manifesto and meaning in South Africa. And how we've really taken that was that it's, uh, it's, we have 11 official languages in South Africa and um, actually 12 now with the official language. But the beauty about this word is that, with the sign language, the beauty about this word is that you actually don't have to speak any of the languages to know what it means. We have conceptualized that whole story into a sneaker brand, and we've walked our journey in South Africa through building our business. We want to be able to go to every other region in the continent to go in in Gigali and say, you know, this is who we are. How do we actually walk, you know, your journey with you? Because our brand promise says we want to walk the journey with everyone who's in a journey of greatness. We want to be able to go to Kenya and say, how do you walk the journey with you in Swahili and so forth? So that is our brand uh, strategy in terms of penetrating different regions and our go-to market. Take a brand that really already carries a story from South Africa and say, how do we come into this region and continue the story and look localize it in that region and across the globe. Thank you. Hey, Theo. Hey. Simple question. How many units or how many pairs of shoes do you sell a day this year? A day? Yeah. Over a thousand. Over a thousand? Yes. Okay. Uh, if I can do some quick math, I think that will help you hit your financial projections of over 80, uh, 18 million dollars a year uh, yes. in revenue this year. Yes. Um, do you think? Do you think that's? I mean, I, I actually think that's quite impressive. Uh, a, a thousand pairs of shoes a day, because your pricing is actually, you know, it's it's pretty, pretty rich. It's uh, 60 dollars a pair of shoes, right? Yep. To the consumers. Yes. Um, do you think that's? Um, is that sustainable? I think so. I think so, because this is uh, the units that we sell predominantly 
in South Africa and obviously including our Omni channel. So when I say over a thousand, I just want to also uh, double tap on that, that we have big transactions that are coming from corporate, right? So we'll have a corporate that is doing a campaign and will come to us and say they want 4,000 pairs. So they're over a thousand on average. And I think it's sustainable because looking at the region that we're only focusing on in the consumption, it's pretty small compared to um, what's available out there in an appetite across the globe. Yes. Um, uh, I'm curious about your marketing strategy. Uh, yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, these brand companies, you look, look at Nike, Adidas, they're marketing companies. Um, tell me a, a few, one or two things about your marketing strategy that is unique. So, um, when you look at our strategy, and especially long term, we looked at what other brands are doing across the globe. Especially in, if I may maybe make an example, especially around the SDGs or some of the social uh, issues or social ills that these brands trade in on a daily in different communities. And we thought about, obviously, we're coming into a market that is already saturated. Like you mentioned, there's a lot of international foodware brands. Ours is not only to connect to our consumer today, a consumer that can contribute to the bottom line today to achieve our growth ambition. But we thought heavily about a consumer that probably that not, they don't know their purpose today, right? They're in primary level. They don't even know their biggest dreams and who they will become in the future. We went to that future consumer who's still in school to say, look, we probably don't know where your journey is going to look like or how your journey is going to look like, but we believe in you and we want to walk the journey with you. So that today, when Theo is in... Um, primary school, you no, know, we go back to them and we give them school shoes. Up until when Theo is uh, one day a Jack Ma of this world and they've built an amazing business, they will never forget who walked the journey with them. So ours and our marketing strategy is not only focusing on the future of the consumer today, but also the future consumer. And I think that is something that is really different that a lot of brands don't do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You look nice, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> is it the batteries? Yeah, I can see. <laughs> so, who is your actual target market? Good question. So, when we started our brand, we really did a lot of study about segmenting our brand, you know, how do we position it, how do we sell it. And it was really interesting to find out that, and it was an, a difficult task, actually, to find out who actually is our target market. Because of when we started, I mean, our shoe cost, on average, 62 you know, USD. It's not every other person who can afford that on a daily. Especially the fact that we are actually not selling shoes to people who are in need of shoes. We are selling shoes to people who are looking for a cool factor. They've got a dope outfit. They've got a couple of thousand uh, dollars to spend on a good pair of shoes. They've got a date. They've got a, a drink to catch up with friends and so forth. We are selling to those people. So it was really hard to really segment that. And we actually found in, in, in trade that our customer is the Perry Evan right? The person who has an ambition to or who aspires to become someone. And then we have also the urban uh, customer. Then we also have, which is really, really challenging to actually penetrate, the whole customer and the high expectation. Mm. So, with what you've defined now, so your competitors are Nike, mm -hmm. Adidas, mm -hmm. Puma, mm -hmm. or any of the major ones, including the high-end canvas 100%. collectors. Okay. The reason I'm asking is every time I think in terms of the continent, I think in terms of uh, the pyramid of our population and where the actual need is in terms of the products. And I'm thinking, how do we design our business models to take advantage of the market we have mm. rather than to serve additionally the same market that is already served? Let me explain myself. At $62 for the cameras, the guys that already can afford Nike, everything, and all of that are the same ones that can buy the Jordans and all of those, those kind of things. So it's really, is that really where the market is? Or is there room for you to look across the spectrum and diversify the product to meet different other uh, market segments and still be unique as you are? 
Absolutely, absolutely. We've actually just done a study in our business around our products because we've worked really hard in engineering the technology in our product because of we listened closely to our consumer. And it was really interesting that in footwear alone, there's so many segments that even when we started, we didn't know that they exist. For example, you know, there's brands that I won't mention that really do well in those segments because they've studied, you know, the appetite of the market. One of the big, you know, sub-segments in footwear, it's lady sneakers, just predominantly sneakers for lady. It's a very big market, right? Mm -hmm. And then you move from then and you go to kiddies as a, as a segment. It's a very big market. So I really believe that with being intentional and the right go-to-market strategy and product offering to all of the segments, there is a big room for growth. I agree with you. So what I'm trying to force you into is to identify who you really set out to sell to and where is the real market within yes. the continent 100%. at the end of the day that allows you to take advantage of the 1.4 billion people that yes. we have on the continent instead of competing with the same 1% that we were talking about. Noted. You, you, you get the yep. point. Thank you. Noted. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. So tell me, Theo, what happened in uh, 2022, last year? I see it deep in your <laughs> revenues. What happened? Yes, I was hoping you're not going to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you look at the, 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 I think, our financials, the history and everything else. So we did very well in 2021, you know, and um, you know, I think that was the highest turnover at the time, uh, which was really amazing. And the brand was gaining so much traction, but I think internally we were not um, ready for that kind of demand. And then we had a lot of, um, um, I think, supply chain issues, obviously, as a result of the pandemic. So what we did was that because of a previous year, we did very well in 2021, we took a lot of money and did um, a lot of advertising from outdoor and so forth. And the, 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 the mistake there was that obviously we locked ourselves into long-term contracts with advertisers outdoor that had a financial obligation, which already committed the fees. However, because of supply chain issues, we couldn't get the products in on time and see them into stores on time, and hence the decline. So that's what happened, which now, hence I'm saying that I'm very much confident that our you know, growth ambition this year is very much possible. So I, I, see you, I see your marketing expenses are very high. Yes. Again, you know, I, I think if you're targeting, uh, you know, the, the creme de la creme, and probably you are using social media, etc. Why is it that expensive? It's expensive because I think for the same reason that I've mentioned that, you know, uh, previously, which is something that we've changed in our business, that we had locked ourselves into long-term um, financial contracts, you know, especially in terms of outdoor advertising, and we did a whole lot of them, right? So with the brand growing, and then we realized that we sometimes don't need so much of, like, outdoor advertising. So I think the mistake that we made then at the time without knowing is that we locked ourselves into a whole lot of financial obligations in regards with outdoor advertising. And I think somewhat there was a return, even though maybe that's not shown the bottom line. The return was in the brand equity because of um, we, two, year, two consecutive years we were mentioned, we were on part of the top 100 most admired African brands. So it might not you know, result into conversion and to the bottom line, but I think as far as equity and the brand equity, that has converted into building the bar to brand equity. Are you exporting at all? Am I? Are you exporting? Yes, I'm exporting. Um, we, uh, we export a lot in SEDEC, we export in uh, the EMEA region and the UK. Actually, just here in Rwanda, when I got in, there's a few guys that actually bought batteries and they saw them at uh, ABH and then they went online and bought the pairs. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, we have one minute, just uh, one question. Um, I want to ask you about your retail store strategy. Uh, I understand that you need to have some physical presence in yep. order to reach the uh, customers. Uh, can you talk about the, uh, the investment and return profile of investing in a retail because you need to set, you know, uh, re renovation and set things up and uh, stock the inventory as well? Yes. So uh, how long does it take to uh, get to cash flow positive in a retail store? 
So the, I think the genius thing that I never actually talk about is that, you know, um, the first three years of our business, we're actually an online and direct sales business, right? So with a very good high turnover and uh, minimal, um, minimal OPEX. So what we had done is that we built our working capital and only did retail for the last three years of our business that we've been in. So the investment has also shown great returns, you know, in our revenue and so forth. And we managed to sustain them alongside all the headquarter costs and the OPEX. Thanks. Thank you.